Hey everyone, welcome back to the Valencia Career Mode. It's season one, episode 10. We're slowly drawing to a close in this season. Performances are up and down. You'll remember we ended off last episode with a hard-fought win against Elche. It wasn't our best performance, but we were at least clinical enough to get the result. The possession was there at times during the game. We were pressuring them in the final third, but we lost a few goals and our chance creation was a little bit farther away from the goal than I would have liked, so there definitely is room for improvement, but there's also a lot of positives. Vega was so good that game, guys. He was popping up in these little different positions all over the pitch and helping out in the build-up, then in the chance creation. So that was really good to see. Gozabales as well came in, got a goal and an assist. I love this kid. I love how he plays, and I'm definitely thinking he's going to get more playing time. He was a little bit more retreated, but he helped a lot in the build-up and he popped up in those crucial moments in the chance creation department and he got the goal and assist, so that's great to see and hopefully we can see more of him in the future. Speaking of the future, guys, we have some big updates in terms of the youth department. First of all, I've changed Martinho Lopez, our young Portuguese talent, to train as a right back. I know his defensive work rate isn't there and his defensive stats aren't quite there, but he has some decent technical ability. He's only 15 and I feel like I can mold him into a proper attacking fullback. We'll see how this goes. We also had a couple players come in and say they were unsettled, they wanted a contract or they're gonna leave. First off, Ludwig Danielson, who has decent potential, but at 18, he's only 54 overall, so I'm not quite sold on him. We still have to make a decision on that. And, we had Enrique Salinas come into the office, guys. So obviously we're not letting him go. He's 18. He's 70 overall now. He's developed a little bit and he's ready to go, guys. I gave him a first team contract and he's excited. So am I. I'm going to put him right into the deep water because what better game to test him in than Cadiz at home, guys. It's a perfect game for him. They drop back. They like the long balls. We're going to have a lot of possession. We're going to be able to dominate this game and he's going to have plenty of opportunity to shine. Now, Cadiz does one thing differently than most teams when they draw back and when they counter. They like to overload wide areas. It all starts from the front. You've got those strikers drifting wide. You've got the CM getting forward into that vacated space. And then out wide, their wingers don't cut inside. They stay wide and their attacking fullbacks join the attack, they bomb forward and overlap. So they're overloading those wide areas and trying to create from there. It's a very interesting system. They don't have too much quality in their team, but most of their players are at least mobile and that's what they're banking on. We're going to go with it, guys. Salinas at striker. This is still up for debate where he's going to end up eventually, but he is denoted as a striker. I'm going to try him there. He has good attack positioning. We're going to see how that goes. And Burlamaki gets the start at CDM. Mamardashvili at goalkeeper. Otherwise, it's a pretty familiar lineup. I can't wait for this debut for Salinas, though. Let's get into it. You really can't underestimate any team, even a minnow like Cadiz, and they started this game off really well, guys, both defensively and then offensively creating opportunities off the counter. They had a really dangerous one here. It goes just wide. But we started to slowly get into the game and start to dominate possession a little bit more against Cadiz, get our own chances, and there wasn't too many in the first half, but there was a good layoff here for Soler. He powers it, but it's saved by the goalkeeper. And then we have another really good chance. As usual, we move it from side to side. Vega gets it out wide on the wing here. He cuts it back for Salinas, guys, and he puts it into the back of the net. It took this guy 35 minutes to score his first goal. What a bright future he's going to have. I'm already so impressed with Salinas, guys. He's doing all the little details correctly. Look at this timed run into the box from him. He gets it, he draws a foul, and we got ourselves a penalty, guys. That is so intelligent from Salinas. Soler steps up to this, guys. He missed the last one, but he buries this one, guys. It's 2-0, and that is all down to Salinas' incredibly intelligent and timed run. At 18, he's already showing... That he's so mature and it's music to my ears. Now Cadiz tried to fight back in this game and Mamardashvili had to make a save or two here or there. But for the most part we were dominating this game. We were in control and creating quite a few chances. And Salinas was getting on the end of a lot of them. 
His attack positioning was so good and at 6-4 with his jumping he was getting some chances like this and that was almost a goal tipped by the goalie saved off the line by one of their players now they try to counter we recycle the play and look at this guys overlapping fallback cut back and it's a goal from Soler a golazzo what a play classic overlapping fullback into the on-running midfielder and it's 3-0 guys and we dominated Cadiz for most of this game. Towards the end they did get a chance, we couldn't deal with the cross in and Don comes in and he smashes it into the back of the net guys. And unfortunately we don't keep the clean sheet here. It's too bad but we do get the win and I am so impressed with Salinas guys. He came in and he got a goal, he created another indirectly and it was just perfect and his dropping in as that false nine into midfield was also very good his link up so I am so impressed and I can't wait for this guy I'm telling you he has such a bright future ahead of him I actually thought this was a more dominant performance than the stats suggest 4.2 expected goals and nine shots I actually thought it was a lot more than that that's how it felt like and the possession wasn't quite there. To be fair, we could have done much better in that second half dominating play. So there's definitely room for improvement. But I tried a high manual press as suggested in the comments from David Nipodam. And it worked quite well. We regained possession higher up the pitch. So thank you for that suggestion. And going back to the analysis, I felt like our shots were at least a little bit closer to the net. With Elche, I thought we struggled with that, so that was good to see. Soler had a really good game from midfield. He was surging into that box. And for me, the highlight was Salinas. You guys know, like, he came in, no stress. Comes in, puts in a performance like that, guys. He was dropping when he needed to. He was surging into the box when he needed to. He got himself five shots, and his passing was really good. It was... Not perfect, but he dropped in as that false nine and he did the job. And I just can't wait to see how this guy plays in the future. Okay, so a few quick updates before we get into our next game. In terms of Salinas' development plan, it's still up for grabs what position he ends up in. But I'm thinking after that performance, he just might stay a striker. So I'm going to train him as a center forward because I really like the Penetrator and Trecartista development plans. They're going to train his core stats of finishing, long shots, vision, short passing, curve, dribbling, stuff like that. I also want to, at some point, train him a little bit as a pressing forward to get the defensive work rate up to medium. Now, in terms of other news, we got a random offer for Marcos Andre from Arsenal. You might not know who this is because he completely doesn't feature in my squad. He just doesn't fit. And he's worth 10.5, they offered 14.5, so I'm not sure why. I quickly accepted before they changed their minds, and we got 12 million out of this. I will take it. And now we're on to our Rayo Vallecano game, and it's a little bit of a change of pace from the last few games, which have been, you know, direct passing, forward runs. They favor a slow build-up possession. Now, they will try to disrupt us a little bit. It is a high line that they play. And they're going with what seems to be very popular in La Liga, the target man and free roaming number 10. Now where it gets different for Real Vallecano is they're very conservative. They don't press their fullbacks forward. They don't uh, send any of their CMs forward. They actually have one staying back at all times. So it's very conservative. We're going to go with our classic 3-4-3. Guiri out on the right hand side. I've been rotating a lot and I will continue to do so and obviously I will be playing Salinas in this game again. After that performance, how can I not? We continue our tradition of starting games off really well guys and there was sustained pressure, we got some good chances, it's a long shot here, saved by the goalkeeper. And they try to make things happen early on in the game but we always nip it, recycle play and continue attacking. Now we, there was a block shot here and there was a lot of commotion but we finally find the open Salinas and he puts it in the back of the net guys, 1-0, it's his second goal in two games and his attack positioning is just on point guys. Now, Rayo Vallecano continue to try to make things happen, but for the most part, we limited them to just this one opportunity in the first half. It was a decent one, but Silasen makes a crucial save. We continue to play our football, and it was a decent first half. What can I say? And Salinas was very active, 
again linking up play well, we maneuver it around well, it does eventually fall to him, Wiedemann slides it in and he puts it just wide. We continue to play really good football in the second half. And the interesting thing about this game was the utilization of those wide areas, wingers running into space. We do it all the time, yes, but it was constant in this game. And Salinas had a really good flick on here for Soler, and it's a save by the goalkeeper. But we did a lot of good things, and Salinas was central to quite a bit of them. Look at this layoff for another run running winger. Guiri cuts it back in for De Kettler, guys. And it's 2-0. What a beautiful goal. But I'm sort of in love with Salinas at this point And just looking at all the different little things he's doing correctly. Getting on the score sheet. But also, you know, linking up play well. Those nice little passes. Hold up play. It's so perfect. Now, late on in this game, Rayo Vallecano would threaten. They would try to get a goal. It's played in centrally. It's attempted to be blocked. But it wasn't. It was a top corner banger. Silison had no chance there. And unfortunately, we are unable to keep a clean sheet yet again, but we do get the win, guys. So we're stringing good results together. And I honestly just cannot look past the good performances of Salinas. For me, it's the headline every game right now. And if he continues playing like this, I mean, he's already a star. What is this guy going to grow into, I wonder? We're winning games, yes. But if you look at the stats, 49% possession, guys. This is the first time in this series that we didn't win the possession battle. And that is a little bit alarming because we should really be dominating. I wanted this to be in the 70s against every team, including Barca and Real Madrid, by the end of the series. Now, at least with the possession we did have, we were in their third and there was a lot of action. So that's good. And we did limit their chances, so there's positives, but it needs to be addressed. We need to start cranking it up. We're stringing results together, but it might be false. If we're not playing well, these results won't come in the future. Salinas had a really good game again, guys. He got the man of the match. He got a few chances. He was able to score one of them. And this time, he didn't misplace a pass. He had almost two expected assists. So he is flying, guys. And you see the article. Enrique Salinas, the hometown hero... He was born and raised in Mestala, in the shadow of the ground. It's a history to make success taste even sweeter. And Ike Salinas enjoyed a very special day that saw him crown the hometown hero, working his socks off to be awarded the man of the match. He's one of our own, chanted the supporters. And this is a club that's always aimed to give a chance to the local boys. And Ike Salinas' display in today's game was a fantastic advert for that policy. I've always known I'd get a chance here, the youngster commented afterwards. Now I just want to repay the manager's faith in me. That is so true. All right, guys, the season is slowly coming to a finish. And looking at the league table, after 31 games, we have 54 points and we're fifth. We're actually one point off of a Champions League spot. Sevilla currently is in fourth. I don't think we'll be able to win more games than Sevilla and we don't play a direct game together. But I'm thinking we can get spots five or six, especially since it's Osasuna Athletic Club. We're five points above Villarreal. I think it's doable. Personally, I really like fifth. I'd want Europa League, Conference League is a bit ponce, but speaking of beating out Osasuna, that's our next game, so a definite must-not-lose game, if you want to call it, and it's an interesting system because I looked at this and I was trying to figure out what they want to do here. They're dropping back and giving me possession, fine, makes sense, but they're playing a high line, so they're giving me possession sort of in my third, maybe? in my half but no farther than that and then they have fast build up forward runs so that makes sense because once they regain position they want to quickly attack you so they're setting up at a 4-5-1 something like that their striker is getting in behind so when they do regain possession he's going to be asking questions of our defense you've got a central midfielder on support filling in the gaps then you've got an asymmetrical setup because you've got the left midfielder cutting inside and a bombing fullback on the left-hand side. But then on the right-hand side, you've got a central midfielder staying back and a right-back staying back. So I'm wondering if this is not some sort of right-back creating a back three and then Moncayola being that defensive midfielder in front of them. It's a weird setup. I wonder how it'll play out. They do have some decent quality. Moncayola has a good pass on him. And David Garcia is a great defender who has 90 heading accuracy. So... 
That back three might be quite formidable, we'll see. I'm going to give Mosqueda a start at CB. I haven't played him in a while. Nandez gets the start at right back. I'm going to be rotating him more and more with Vas and Salinas will continue to play guys I mean how can I not play him after these two performances he's a bit tired so I will sub him out but he does get this start in a crucial game against Osasuna here Salinas is up to Salinas things guys and I can't praise this kid enough because he comes into a system which is tactically demanding and he thrives in it he turns here and he hits the post guys on another day that goes in and we are up 1-0 Osasuna though fight back and they have a good spell of possession in the first half and create a dangerous opportunity this wasn't even defended bad but that volley is world class and it beats Silasen and all of a sudden we find ourselves down in a crucial game to Osasuna but we don't let that affect us we continue to play decent football and attack and the Kettler was really central in this game guys he finds himself in good position always this time it's blocked but it gets recycled falls back to him and this time he makes no mistake guys 1-1 he levels us up and like I said he's a big player I've said this from the beginning of the season he shows up in big moments and he's there when you need him and that is so valuable to have in a player we continue to attack Osasuna and yet again it's going to be the Kettler who is crucial here it's worked around, we like to bring it back and then into the center. He lays it off for Wiermann and it's a save. And then off the resulting corner, it's the Kettler who rises above and that could have been a goal, but it doesn't go in. Osasuna start the second half off really well, guys. They intercept the ball and they have a good counter opportunity here. There's a runner in from behind. He gets in and he smashes this, but it's a save from Silasen. They had really good momentum going and they pressured me a lot, but that momentum was broken in the 57th minute when one of their central midfielders dives into the challenge and gets himself sent off. He gets a red. And from then on, we started to regain the initiative. Right off of the kickoff from that red card, Salinas makes another really intelligent run. He gets a chance, but it's saved by the goalkeeper. I am in love with those runs that he's making. They're just so perfect. And we try to get something going in late into this game. We try to take advantage of that man advantage. Vega gets a good shot, but unfortunately we fall short. We really couldn't create anything. Osasuna focused on their defense and they brought home this 1-1 result. It's a good result for them. It's a missed opportunity for us, but at least we get the minimum requirement in this must-not-lose game and get a draw against Osasuna. That performance wasn't half bad. The chance creation was there. 12 shots, 4.8 expected goals, but the possession was down a little bit. And it has been for the last few games, which is worrying because, especially in this game, they got a red and I thought we would kick on, dominate play in the second half, but it was 50-50, it was a toss-up, and that's not good enough. We also didn't have enough possession in their final third, and that is worrying. We do have to address that. But we did have a few chances created, and we seem to be veering towards this right hand side recently Salinas is drifting into that space so it's really interesting to see but for the most part it wasn't a good enough performance and there wasn't a standout performer either everybody played about average and we just couldn't get the result it's disappointing but we have to move on our next game is another crucial one away to Villarreal and to be honest this is one of my favorite games in La Liga because I love how they set up it's a balanced system they keep shape and react to you Whatever you give them, they'll try to capitalize on it. And I like that to a degree. They also set up in a 4-5-1, but the instructions is what I find most interesting. And I really like this. I want to try it out in the future. You've got a target man who's linking up play. And then you've got Parejo, who used to play for us. And I will be looking to bring him back at some point during this series. He's running and surging past that striker. And then you've got an asymmetrical setup. You've got a left midfielder who's cutting inside, and then you've got that modern fullback, he's bombing forward, but on the right-hand side, you don't have that. You have a free-roaming Chukueze, and he's covered by a central midfielder who stays back, and I find this dynamic really interesting, and it works really well, I thought it did in the first game, and they were really solid defensively, and they got their chances. Now, they have some quality in their team, especially in the midfield, I mean, Parejo 
90 long pass, 92 short pass. This is exactly why I want him back in our club. He is perfect. And if he slotted into that Veerman role, he would just destroy teams. And then you've got Demir Bey, who's also a very technical player. So they're a very dangerous side and we have to respect them. And this is a direct rival for the European spot. So it is a crucial game. Salinas is going to sit this one out, at least at the beginning, because he was tired after playing those three games. Vega comes back. At the striker position, Moriba is going to play Cam. Musa on the right-hand side. A lot of rotation going on. We are going to try to close out this season. And we're going to try to get a good result against a quality Villarreal side here. It was a pretty cagey affair in the first half. It was clear Villarreal did not want to lose a goal and they prioritized solidity at the back. Now we got one or two chances, but there was nothing clear. This was pretty good to be fair. Moriba got on the end of it and it was saved by the goalkeeper, but there was a lot of chances where Villarreal did just enough to come back and disrupt me from getting a clear chance. Over here, they intercept it, they clear it. And like I said, there wasn't much in it in the first half. Villarreal had no chances and it was clear that they were more interested in keeping a nil-nil and looking for something in the second half. Soler tries to chip it. It really wasn't a lot. Villarreal started the second half a little bit more positively on the front foot and they surprised me. Parejo made a really good intelligent run in behind. He's set to get forward so it makes sense. And he smashes it past Silas and guys, and it's 1-0. And that was unfortunate because it caught me off guard. I thought they were going to be a little bit more defensive like in the first half. And after that, they went right back to being defensive because this 1-0 was enough for them. And that's what they often do. But we tried to pressure and we move it around. Well, Vega gets it. Finesse shot just wide. We continue to try to attack. Villarreal is being as solid defensively as they possibly can. Wiedemann gets a good shot. It's saved by the goalkeeper. And it's starting to look like maybe they're going to frustrate us out of this game. But they make a mistake. Vega heads it back into Moriba's path. And he just smashes this off the bar and in. What a goal from Moriba. And he pops up in these situations. And he has a nasty shot, to be honest. He gets it to 1-1. But Villarreal was clearly not satisfied with... A draw and they try to make things happen. Parejo again tries, but Silasen this time makes the save. And then we had one last chance in this game. In the final moments of the game, we work it around well and it falls to Soler a few meters out and he hits the bar. How did you not put that in, man? That was a sure goal and we had this win in the bag. And unfortunately, it's another missed opportunity. But at the same time, it's another draw in a must not lose game so at the same time it's a good result it's a mixed feeling for sure i hope we retained our position in the league table it's a draw against Villarreal. a lot of the things i mentioned in the pregame analysis at least from Villarreal's point of view, is reflected in the stats. There wasn't all that much chances from them. Three shots, 0 0.7 expected goals. It was more so about being solid defensively. And for the most part, they did a successful job. We did have a few opportunities. 4.4 expected goals, I think, is a little bit high. But we did have a few opportunities. In terms of the heat map, they actually kept a little bit more possession than I was expecting, especially during portions of the game. And they did abuse that left-hand side where I have that bombing fullback. You can see that heat map is lit up there as opposed to that void on that right-hand side. Like I said, in terms of chance creation, they got a few, they took one of them, and that's what they're all about, being clinical when they do have their chances. We had just a little bit more, but in the end, it's a draw. Soler was probably the standout performer. You can tell he was trying to get on the ball, make things happen, but in the end, it's just a draw against Villarreal. And now we're going to have a slight change of pace here. Before we get into the final game of the episode, we have our second intake of youth players. Now, because we had a board objective where I have to sign one of each position, it's really difficult to adhere to my rules and do this where it's six month trip. So we sent a three month trip for 
defenders and goalkeepers. And we're going to see what we found here. Gil Duarte was an interesting right back and we had an 80% chance to sign him. We successfully did that. Then we found an interesting young player from Portugal, Florencio Lobo, who's a CDM. And we had a 60% chance of nabbing him. He's got really decent overall at that age and really good potential and we managed to get him. So I'm really excited about him. Mario Ramos was another super talent, 40% chance to sign him, unfortunately we did not. And then we move on to the Spanish goalkeepers, guys. We found some decent ones and I tried to sign two of them because they were generally really good. We had a 60% chance to sign Garrido and we were successful and we had a 40% chance to sign Calderon and we actually managed to pull it off. So a successful intake of youth players, looking at them. Lobo, I think, is the most exciting. At 15, he's 60 overall with that kind of potential. And if you dive deeper, he has some really good stats here. High attacking work rate. If we increase the defensive work rate, he can be a really successful CM for us. He's got the technical ability. He's got some defensive stats. He's not slow. I'm training him as an anchorman for now, but he's going to get trained in a bunch of different aspects. I think he's going to be a really good player in the future. Then you look at Duarte. You know what? He has high and high attacking work rate and defensive work rate. You've got decent defensive stats for this age and I feel like he can develop into a decent right back. And then obviously the goalies, they're pretty good, both of them. And we're probably going to cut one goalkeeper because we have three of them. But if you look at it, I'm training them a sweeper keeper and they're going to increase their weak foot, their ball playing skills. And hopefully at least one of them can become a starting goalkeeper. I know we have Mamar Dashvili and that's all well and good, but you never know when he'll get sold, when someone will come in for him. So it's good to have goalies in the reserve in the backup. And now guys, we're going to go into our final game of the episode. We have five games left, guys. It's the business end of the season and we need to get results. Osasuna is right on our tail. So is Villarreal. So those two draws against them to keep them at bay were quite critical. And now we have a massive game coming up against our rivals, guys. Derby games are always exciting and they take a mind of their own. I'm not going to go into a tactical analysis. I never do for derby games. That's how I roll. Salinas is back in the starting lineup. Vega and Guiri will be the wingers for this game and Nandez will retain his spot at right back and we're gonna have a proper go at Levante guys let's end off on a positive note here Guys, we were firing on all cylinders in this game. We really were. Salinas got a really good early chance and he hit the post. This is like deja vu from the other game. I can't believe he didn't score that. That would have been a quick goal for him. But we continue to attack. We're relentless. And this time Salinas turns creator. The Kettler gets it and it's a save. This should already be 2-0. Those two chances were already golden. And we continue to get more chances. The Kettler drops off. Soler runs in. And this time he puts it in, guys. 1-0 against our rivals. And this game is turning out really good. We are dominating completely. Levante is on their knees and we continue to attack. It falls again to Salinas here off a clever play and he smashes it in, guys. Another goal for Salinas. What a game this is turning out to be and what a player Salinas is turning out to be. Every time he touches the field, he scores a goal. We kept on coming against Levante in the second half, guys, pummeling them. And look at this pass by Salinas. He plays in the Kettler. He squares it to Gilaman and we are up 3-0. And what is Gilaman doing in the box? You're supposed to be staying back in this system. But he is having fun and we are dominating Levante like it's nothing. In the first game, they did a number on us. They stifled us and it was really hard to create any offense, but not in this game. We get another chance here from Virman. It's saved by the goalkeeper and it was just constant pressure. We dominated Levante from start to finish. I don't remember them having any chances of note. And in the final 10 minutes, we have a really good one here. It's played into the middle, laid off for Salinas, who gets his second goal of the game. He was instrumental in assisting that goal from Gilamon. He was just immense this game. And we win three games this episode, guys. Tie another two, we're unbeaten. What an episode this is. We're nearing the end of the season and we're getting the results we need, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you like the content, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time, guys. Laters!